Hi guys, my name's Johnny. I run Banquist. Now, personally, I've been counting down the days until lockdown finishes to be able to invite friends around and cook for them because that's what food is all about. And so it's with an absolute pleasure that I introduce sharing menus from Banquist. Now, what better sharing menu than a barbecue and what better chef to lead that than Gareth Ward cooking out of Inesia in Wales. Enjoy. Hi, Gareth Ward, uh, one mission star uh, in a senior restaurant in Wales. We're all about fun here. Uh, fun, have a great time, best ingredients. Uh, just cook beautiful, loads of flavour. So what we've got here is tomahawk steak with a shrimp and garlic brown butter. Garlic, wild garlic mayonnaise, new seasoned potatoes, a beautiful barbecue green salad. And then over here, the filthiest STP, stink toy pudding you've ever had. Thank you. So as usual, uh, Banquist are going to supply you with uh, some of the best ingredients that they can find. Uh, so we're just going to run through what's going to be inside your box here. This is basically uh, surf and turf done our way with an incredible tomahawk steak. These are really beautiful, look at the fat in that. Beautiful mother. People are a bit scared of fat but this that's flavour and that's going to make this steak cook really really beautiful and tender. So you've got an incredible tomahawk or two there, or one, depends how hungry you are. <laughs> um, and then we're going to serve that, like I said, it's like a surf and turf with garlic, which is an unbelievable meal and some nice potatoes. So you've got a, uh, a sauce, which is going to be like a brown butter sauce with shallots and garlic, loads of shrimp, loads of lemon and some parsley. And that's just going to go over the top of the steak when it's cooked. And then you're going to have a nice salad. It's going to be like a green salad. But then we're going to, if you, we're going to barbecue these vegetables. First, we're going to blanch them and we're going to let them cool down at room temperature. Do not, we're not going to, um, Freshen them in water, best way to cool them down is naturally. Then roll them on the barbecue, some shredded lettuce and some spring onions, some beautiful pickled shallots. And then we're going to make a dressing out of the pickled shallot liquor and some wild garlic oil and a bit of salt. Then just some simple, simple boiled potatoes. Incredible potatoes, you don't need to do anything to them. And that's all you need for that. And then moving on to the dessert, sticky toffee pudding. Who doesn't love sticky toffee pudding? You're going to want, want to share in nice tins. You're going to have a batter ready to go. This is an incredible no-churn ice cream, vanilla. So you just pop that into a dish and freeze it. One of the first things you do when you get your box, that one. And a nice toffee sauce, which you pour over once your, once your sticky toffee's out the oven. That's it, enjoy. As ever with Bankris, we provide you with most of what you need, uh, but we're gonna um, rely on you to have the bits and pieces to finish it off with. So this is what you'll need there to prepare the meal in the box that you've been given. <clears throat> so at home you should have some oil, either olive or cooking, some salt and some sugar and some butter, you're going to need loads of butter for this one, uh, and some clean film. And then uh, a Tupperware tub of some kind, just to put your ice cream in, it's one of your first jobs you'll do when you get your box, so it's nice and frozen. A few pans uh, of different sizes, like bigger one for potatoes, one for your sauce, one for your sticky toffee sauce, this is for your shrimp sauce, some scales metal trays for cooking, a microplane or a, something like a cheese grater but a fine one, obviously knives and steels if you've got them, a bigger pot for blanching greens, with maybe a spider if you've got one or you know just use your hands if you're, if you're hard, um, some J cloth just to drain some veg off and then uh, obviously this is a barbecue box so you want some real best quality coal Better, the better the, the better the coal you buy, the better the flavour you're going to get. I swear by that. Don't buy cheap because it's going to taste like nothing. And uh, something to light it with. We've got a blowtorch, obviously. You can use matches or uh, fire lighters. I don't tend to like fire lighters. If you do use fire lighters, please make sure that they've completely burnt out first before you start cooking because it's going to taste horrible. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Ready to rock. So the night before you've got your box, you've taken all your ingredients out, you've put everything in the fridge that you need to. And the first thing you've got to do before you go to bed is freeze your ice cream. Now, a beautiful specimen of a man called Alex Bond has given me his recipe for a non-churn um, vanilla ice cream. That's very kind of him. It's a very good recipe. It's literally three ingredients. Uh, I'm very impressed with it. And all you do is it's in a bag like that. You get yourself a Tupperware tub or anything like that, or a glass, something with a lid on it and you just pour it straight out this bag into the tub 
Obviously, you don't waste anything if you can get it all out. Like so. Pop the lid on and put that in your freezer. And then hopefully by tomorrow that'll be set. So what's in there is all that is, is three ingredients. So you've got condensed milk, eight quantities of that, double cream and some awesome vanilla. And that's it. So now before we get started, first thing to do is preheat our oven at 180 degrees. That is for our sticky toffee pudding. So what you've got in your box is a tin with a lid. This is to share between two people and a batter. This is pre-made sticky toffee batter. So we're just going to cut the end off there and it's going to spurt out everywhere because it's, it's under proper pressure that is. And just fill your tin, hopefully, with your batter. So in the batter here, you've got dates, you've got flour, eggs, um, molasses, sugar, a little bit of coffee, and that's all in there. And then that's, as you can see, it really aerated because it's nice and warm. And the bicarb in there, when you put bicarb in to break your dates down, makes it like a mush and it's full of bubbles. So this is going to be super light. So you fill it up until the top, just, just before the top, and then you just bang that in the oven. And that wants to go in the oven at 180 degrees for 26 minutes. And then we'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. Awesome. So, your sticky toffee's out of the oven. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna leave it rest just for a couple of minutes. Don't go into it too soon because it's still cooking. So give it like five, 10 minutes and then get yourself tweezers or a, a wooden skewer or a fork and just go over it and just give it some stabs. Just really light, don't ruin your cake obviously. And then here, the reason why we're doing that is to let the sauce in. So it goes right, when you pour the hot sauce over, goes inside, makes it super sticky and amazing and really, really moist. You can have your sauce, which is in a bag. You're gonna empty it into a pan and we're just going to warm that up. It doesn't need to be red hot, but it wants to just, just be before boil. And then we're going to pour it over here. And then we've got your lid. So you want, you've got two sides to your lid. You've got your cardboard side there, and you've got your um, tin foil side. The tin foil side needs to go down, because that's going to keep the heat in. And obviously these things are designed to cook in, so it's, if you put it that way around, the cardboard will burn on the inside. So while we're waiting for the sauce to heat up, you need to preheat your oven back down to 100 degrees, and that's for your tomahawk steak. So get that done nice and early, so you're not, you're not waiting for that later. So you've got your hot sauce, which is here. It's just starting to come up, obviously make sure it doesn't burn. And you just want to pour that over. You stick your toffee. You want loads of that in there. Obviously, keep whatever's left in the pan. That's for eating it later on. Then get your lid, tin foil down. Use the crimps on the side. Like that, and then just stick it above your oven or somewhere nice and warm. And we'll come back to that later on. So, when you took the sticky toffee out the oven, it'll have risen right up because of all that bicarb. You just let that, when we just let it sink down, it takes a few minutes and then we put that sauce on and then just let that sit somewhere nice and just rest and just like get all that, soak all that sauce up and just make it amazing. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is um, we're gonna preheat the oven and we're gonna light the barbecue, which is obviously two really important things when it comes to this. So we're gonna go over here now. So we've got our, uh, obviously a rationale oven here. Uh, the oven at home should be fairly similar. So just whack it at 100 degrees if it's a fan, if you can turn the fan up or down, leave it on full uh, and get that on nice and early so it's just ready to go. It's ready to rock when you need it. And then barbecue, like I said before, so in here we've got our barbecue ready to go. We've got, um, if you're using a coal barbecue, make sure the, the air vents are open in the bottom to get that real air flow coming through. You've got 
good amount of calls in there build it up get loads of calls in because what you're going to do which is really important is a lot of people don't do is you put a tiny amount of calls in there and they try and cook on it it's not hot enough you get loads of calls get it lit let it burn for a long time in a in a mass so if you if you can imagine trying to get it into a pile not flat into a nice big pile build it up you do have a lot of people do have these things which are like barbecue starters which is like a big tube with a handle on it and you've got a trigger you can put that if you have got one of them you'll know how to use it in the middle of barbecue fill the coals in the top and you light it and it's like a furnace so that the higher it is you get that airflow through it it gets really hot and then you release it and then you can flatten it out into your barbecue when you've got them nice white embers that's what you want to cook on you want to cook on white embers not black charcoal because black charcoal isn't hot enough when it's white it's almost like your embers are spent and it's ready to cook and a lot of barbecues that you have if you're trying to cook for a long time and you want to manage your fire is you'll have one side of your barbecue piled up which is red hot embers and when you want to cook you take some of them out and you move it over to the part of the barbecue where you want to cook and then you would feed that pile over the side with more coal or more wood so you keep it burning all of the time so it's like feeding the fire and then every time you need to use the fire you move a little bit out over to the side now if you wanted ferociousness get some right char on obviously you would char over the really hot bit but if you wanted a control cook obviously you take off enough coals to just cook it nice and lightly which is what a lot of people don't do with barbecues is they burn everything and then they think they don't a lot of people are or don't like barbecues because they think it's just burn food it's not if you control your fire properly so what we're going to do is we've got a blow torch here we're just going to put our lid down so we don't get spat at. and we're going to put the flames onto the coal if you buy a really good quality charcoal you will not need fire lighters because it will, they will, they will, they'll be nice and dry, they'll be really good quality and they'll light very easily themselves obviously the worse it is the, the more light, the more hot you've got to concentrate on getting it lit but if you just put this in here for a few minutes just keep moving it this coal will light very easily and just move it around so you're not lighting it just in one place And obviously with this we got a lid on this and you want we want to keep the lid down because then you're drawn it's drawn air through from the bottom like a fire at home if you ever lit a fire at home you open all of the the dampers at the bottom up so you're drawn air through your fire and out the top up your chimney and that's what makes it get really hot and then once it's hot then you close everything down and you keep your heat in okay so we'll leave that lid down and that'll, uh, we'll come back to that in about half an hour and we'll see where we are. So barbecue's come to temperature. Um, obviously, a couple of things you've got to be wary of is when you are lighting your barbecue, make sure your coals have been kept in the correct um, atmosphere, so not somewhere too damp, otherwise it's going to take a long time to light. And obviously, be very careful of the bottom of your bag because sometimes you end up with a lot of coal dust in there and that poppers chokes up your barbecue and stops it from burning so hot so there are a couple of other things so what we're going to do here we've got the tomahawk this has come up to temperature so one thing you should do with this is get it out of the fridge about an hour or two before you're going to cook it that just gets it up to room temperature and it just stops it having that raw bit in the middle when it when you're cooking it so if you get some oil either olive oil or some cooking oil it's up to you and just rub it in on your dish, get it all over like that. Like so, and then get some salt. And don't be shy with your salt. A lot of this salt will fall off when it's cooking. So you get plenty on there. So you get that awesome crust on the outside. It goes nice and crispy. Like so, and then we're gonna take this over to barbecue. Now, if you have a look at this barbecue here, that's perfect there, how you want it. It's beautiful white coals. It's not too hot, you can hold your hand over. So you're gonna get a perfect cook. It's not gonna be raging, it's not gonna be in your face, it's not gonna be burning your hair off. You know, you want it, you want it controlled. So you've got, you, with the beauty of this tomahawk steak is you've got a handle, so use it. So I always go 
fat side down first like that and don't rush it don't play with it you don't need to be touching it every two seconds just let it do its thing and you see there the fat's dripping off onto them coals you're getting that beautiful charcoal flavour on there it's starting to crispen up So this is just the first part of the cook. So we're not gonna cook this all the way on here. You could do at this heat, which is absolutely perfect by just controlling your heat at the bottom. Obviously the more heat you want, the more you open the, uh, the airflow at the bottom, the cooler you want it, you close it down. You could cook this steak from scratch on this barbecue, but it's, it's a skill, you know? So with the combination of uh, a barbecue and an oven, you can get an unbelievably cooked perfectly delicious steak without um, ruining it on the barbecue if you try to cook it from scratch so you just start flipping it over there now and you just want to seal it everywhere there's a raw piece of meat you just want to seal it up smells with a with a fat your beef fat dripping onto the coals which smells absolutely insane now it all depends how you want this steak cooked obviously Steaks are a very personal thing. Everyone has their own very personal cuisson on a steak. Uh, there is no, I can't tell you how to cook this because I don't know how you like your beef. And everyone gets quite funny about the way they want their beef. So I normally go on temperatures if I was going to cook this rather than times. So if, you, if you've got a temperature probe, if you've got one in your oven, which some of them have, or if you've got a little handheld one, you want to go 55 for a rare a rare steak you're looking at 65 for a medium and then 70 75 for a slightly more well done medium well that's kind of the temperatures you're looking for so as you can see that there it's nice and sealed off it's locked all that flavor in then we're just gonna i've got a little temperature problem here so i'm just gonna if you have got one of these on your oven, little temperature probe, just bang it in the middle, like so, into the oven, just bang out the oven for 30 minutes and just give it a little check to see if it's where you want it. Tom Hawk's in the oven, cooking nice and slowly. Now let's get on with the garnish on for this uh, dish. It's really simple. So we're going to start off with potatoes first. So beautiful potatoes, make sure they're washed. Get all that mud off. We're not going to peel these because the, the skins on these new season potatoes are, are super tasty. And then, so we're in a pan, a good amount of salt, just to give them a season. And then they go on the oven, on the, on the stove, sorry. And you just want to simmer them until they're just tender. You've got to be really careful, don't boil the potatoes rapidly because if they get over about 85, 90 degrees, they start to explode. Uh, so you don't want that. You want them to cook nice and gently. So just a gentle simmer until you take the potato out and you can feel it. It's just given under your fingers or you cut it with a knife and it's nice and cooked in the middle. Uh, roughly about 10, 15 minutes. So this, so this dish, for me, this is like a beef salad. 
So it's not, nothing's, nothing's hot, it's summertime, you're outside, all the garnishes should be just room temperature, so your potatoes, just nice, there's nothing better than just a warm potato, you know, eating a red hot potato just burns your mouth and burns on the way down. In, in this time of year, you don't want that. So you just want, it's just all nice and room temperature, salad ingredients. So you've got your green veg, and you just obviously make sure you trim off any nasty bits of your asparagus. Obviously the old trick where you just snap off the bottoms where it's getting woody, like so. And then with the asparagus, I don't peel my asparagus. I just knock off these little frilly bits. I don't, I don't like peeling asparagus because there's nothing wrong. There's that green skin on that asparagus is super tasty. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, these, it's only these bits you want to get rid of because they can be quite spiky and a bit offensive in the mouth. So you just go across and you just knock them off like that. And obviously, make sure you give asparagus is one thing that a lot of people forget. It's grown in quite sandy soil. So it, all the bits of grit and that get stuck in the top. So if you give it a wash under some cold water, with it held up and get all of the bits of sand and stuff out, out of the top so it's not gritty. Just clean all that off like so. And then we're going to get to the green beans, which are very simple. And we're going to put all of this veg in a pan at the same temperature because it'll all cook very similar times. But we're not going to refresh. I hate refreshing green veg in ice water, I think it's an absolute waste of time. You've boiled it in water already. So the best thing to do is just like any piece of meat, let it rest, take it out of the water and leave it somewhere and let it rest like a piece of meat. All them juices go back into the mid, to the center of the veg and keeps it super tasty. Just chucking it in ice water is just from one extreme to the other for me. It just doesn't work. So you got your green beans. You make sure that they're all facing the same way so you want this woody stalk bit there all of them together like so and then if you just tap them down on the bench like that all your woody stalk bits should be about level so you just get rid of that so you've got all your green veg there together so we're just going to take this over to our pan and we're going to start blanching them with some, we're going to season the water with some nice salt. So as you can see, your potatoes here are just gently simmering. It doesn't want to be any more than that. If it's boiling, they'll explode and you'll just have a horrible watery potato on your hands. So you've got your water here with your spider boiling away. Give your water a good generous season. and then get your green veg in. You want to bring that back up to the boil and you want to cook them quite hard. The difference between that and that is cook them in a good boil pan so we make sure it's constantly boiling. Uh, they'll, they'll stay nice and green and lock the freshness in. Potatoes is a completely different kettle of fish. If you've got a lid, just cover it up with a little lid and keep the heat in. While they're in there, you can get yourself some jake off. Just a couple of pieces. And we're going to drain the veg out of the pan onto the J cloth just to absorb that, that moisture from the pan. So just have that ready on your tray. So the veg should take in the pan two, two to three minutes max. So that's how you want your veg just boiling away. And just to check it, just lift the piece out and just give it a little squeeze. That's about 30 seconds off that before we take it out. Obviously you want to take it out just before it's soft because you're not going to refresh this in ice water like you normally would 
with the green veg. So you, this is going to carry on cooking. So you want to take it out just before it's normally ready, otherwise you'll end up with soft veg at the end. So I'm just going to lift that out of there, give it another little check. 30 seconds, that'll be ready. Nice hard boil, keeping that green and that fresh, freshness of the veg. 10 more seconds and they'll be coming out of there. So just using your spider or whatever you've got, if you've, if you've got to have to use a colander, just pour, put a colander in your sink, pour the veg straight out over the colander so you're catching all your veg. And you just want to lift this onto your tray, like so. Like that. And you just want to let that rest for a few minutes and then we can finish that off. So what you want is, you want this just starting to break under pressure, as you can see there. Just starting to break, you know. It's not too soft. If it was, if it's too soft at this point, it's gonna be ruined by the time you get it on the barbecue. So you just want it really just, just under pressure. It wants to be soft, that's it. So as your, your greens are resting after being cooked, they're gonna go on the barbecue in a bit, but we're gonna get the base of the salad ready. So you've got yourself a lettuce, take the root off, and you wanna get rid of all this horrible green stuff on the outside. It's not what you want, it's bitter, it's old leaf. You know, you wanna get the nice, fresh center, like so. So pull them apart. If you need to give it a little wash, give it a wash. Sometimes you don't need it. Just pull that apart like so, into your bowl. Any big ones like this, just tear them up. Like I said, get rid of that. It's horrible and bitter and soft. And get your spring onions. And you just want to take your root off. Like so. Now I love steak. Steak absolutely loves onions, and this this salad is like. You want look, you've got we've got pickled shallots going here and we've got these beautiful fresh spring onions. It's gonna be absolutely outrageous with a piece of meat. Because this is the acidity, this is what'll make it fresh and amazing. So you want to take out all these dry bits of spring onion. Just peel that outside layer off basically. So you've got that nice fresh layer inside. And all we're going to do with these is, we're just going to chop them up. Like so. So clean your board. Get rid of any excess root. Then starting from the white, on maybe a slight angle. And get some of that green in. A lot of people took their greens away. As long as they're clean and they don't look old, it's got bangs, bags of flavour in there. So we're going to get that there. So you've got them chopped up, ready to go. We'll get that in there, like so. You've got a bag of pickled shallots. Empty the liquid into there. That's your base for your dressing for this salad. So you're getting two in one here. And then fish them beautiful pickled shallots out of there. Like so, and then that's ready to go. Got some wild garlic oil. So this is fresh wild garlic leaves picked. We harvest in one day. We'll go out when we think the garlic's perfect and we'll harvest 200 kilos to three, 400 kilos of wild garlic in one day. And we'll smash this whole kitchen, will be covered in wild garlic. And we'll do two or three different preserve jobs. So we've got this for the whole year. This is actually last year's wild garlic yet. We haven't done this year's yet. So this is just the oil, which is just blended down. So you get the fresh leaf and the um, oil, blend it till it reaches about 65 degrees. And then we pass it 
through a muslin cloth and then you have this beautiful green oil which can be frozen and kept for all year round. So what you've got there is, that's your base for your salad. All we've got to do now is barbecue our, our veg. Awesome, so we're going to just go and check the potatoes and see if they're cooked. So these have just been on the simmer for, like I said before, anywhere from 10, 15, 20 minutes. How you can check these potatoes is just take one out and just give it a little squeeze. And what you want is you can feel the potato giving under your fingers. It's just nice and soft. If you're not confident and you want to check it, obviously you can just get a knife and just cut it in half. You'll feel straight away if they're not cooked, your knife will, it'll feel like you're cutting through a rubber potato. And then just press it in the middle there. It's a soft, beautiful soft potato. They're amazing. So what you do after that is once they're off the stove, leave them to cool down in the water for a little bit before you take them out. Again, it's that resting thing. And then we're just gonna lift them out in a bit into a little dish, give them a little bit of salt, nothing else, because you've got lots of, lots of other flavors going on in this dish. You don't need to really put anything on them potatoes because you're gonna have mayonnaise and dressing on the salad. And then you've got the sauce on the steak as well. Awesome, so now we're gonna make the shrimp butter sauce. So this is, I love brown butter sauce. Like, it's not really a sauce, it's almost like a dressing for like things like barbecued fish or roast fish or roast meat, it's amazing. This is basically like our interpretation of a surf and turf, which is great with a steak. And then it's got, obviously you've got the garlic, mayonnaise, you know, and the salad. It's, it's just really like, it's just what you wanna eat. So you get yourself a shallot, take the end off, Leave the root side on. Take it in half. So you've got two nice halves like that. Have yourself a little bowl for all the all the trim. And you just peel off the outside. Like so. And then go down a layer. Just so you're getting that old layer of onion off the outside. And then you just want to slice that in half moons. Just like so. And again, the other half. Yeah, so what you do is you have your thumb on the back where the root is, your fingers in front of your knife, and you're pushing the shallot through your fingers as you're moving your fingers forward. Just like that. So that's your shallot done. Get some garlic. Just take off the root. Like that. And you've got some nice big, big old cloves. I want to put three cloves of garlic in this. You might think that's quite a lot, but you just can't beat that. Loads of, loads of garlic on your steak with prawns. You, you can't have enough garlic in my opinion. Just peel off. Like so. And then again, I'm gonna go nice thin slices. And you haven't got to go really fine on this, because you want them, for me, you want them beautiful big pieces of garlic. Just like that. So, that's all chopped. Get a pan on your stove. And you don't want it too hot. And you just want to melt some butter in there. You're gonna, you're gonna put a lot of butter in this, but right at the beginning, you only need a little bit. And we're just gonna melt that. We don't use a lot of butter in our food here, but when we do use it, we make sure we use shitloads, just for a laugh. Kinda makes it up for the stuff we don't use. So once that's melted like that, we're gonna add our shallots and garlic.
and a little bit of salt. Salt helps break down the shallots and garlic and make them go tender. And just like that. And if you've got a little lid for your pan, or another pan the same, just pop it on top like that. And what you want to do is you almost want to steam fry them shots and garlic so it goes really, really tender without colouring up too quickly, because otherwise what you end up with is, is a, quite a bitter, astringent flavour on your garlic and shallots. And what you want is you want to bring low temperature, bring all of that sugar out, steam it so it's nice and tender and super, super sweet and delicious. And then once that's happened, we can crank the temperature up a little bit, throw some more butter in, get that nice and brown, and then we're going to take it off the heat and finish the sauce off. So while that's just steaming there now, we'll just have a little check. It's just cooking nicely. We're going to get some parsley. Now this sauce needs loads of parsley in my eyes. So just chop that up. Doesn't have to be really fine. You can get some of the stalk in there as well. Just like that. And then you've got your brown shrimps. These will be coming in a little packet like this. You just peel off the, the plastic and put parsley in there like that because they're going into the pan at the same time the garlic and shallots start to smell amazing so just really carefully make sure you don't burn yourself with the steam and just keep giving that a little stir you just want to check when it's ready you just want really soft delicious pieces of garlic and shallot. So that isn't far off. This process here take about 5-10 minutes to get them perfect. Obviously you don't want them cooked too far because you still want it to have a little bit of texture. Um, but if it's still raw it's going to be horrible. So we get the rest of the butter. Obviously we're not going to use all of this. Ready and in here we've got juice of one lemon. Yeah, you're going to get a lemon in your box. Um, so all you do is just squeeze it out, and then so it's ready to go. You don't want to be get, have that ready because when your sauce is so easy to put together at the end, you don't want to be faffing around trying to find your lemon in the end because <clears throat> you might burn your sauce. So what we're going to go on now is this should be about ready. Like I said, just be really careful if you're lifting your lid off, you don't burn yourself. I'm just going to check that. Mm. So that's delicious. It wants to be tender, it wants to be sweet, it doesn't want to be too crunchy. If it's, if it's too crunchy, you need to go a bit further. So a really tender, sweet garlic and shots, really fresh. So you crank the temperature up, throw some more butter in. And as you can see, that's just forming up lovely. That's what you want. That's what you're looking for. So as soon as this is, sauce is formed, you can get, this is when you start to caramelise your, your garlic and shallots a little bit. So you can get it up quite high, but obviously controllable temperature, not out of control. You don't want to ruin it now. And when it's there, that's where it's nice and foamy. Stop it with your lemon juice. And throw in your shrimp and parsley. And 
then we'll just give that a little taste. Mm. And then it just needs a tiny bit of salt. And that's it. Sauce is ready to go. So we just set this aside and then just before the steak's ready to go, we'll give that a little warm up and we'll, we'll dress the steak with the top. So what we're going to do now is just get the beef out of the oven, it should be ready, and then we're just going to let that rest on the side for about 5-10 minutes. So, beef's here. We just check it, absolutely beautiful. Just This is exactly where I want it, which is about medium. Beautiful there, it's nice and medium. It's just, just coming to firm to the touch, a little bit spongy. About 65 degrees in the middle. And I'm just going to put that up there. We're going to let that rest for 5-10 minutes. So, so what we're going to do now is just finish off this veg. So it's it's beautifully rested. It's just almost tender. Brush the barbecue. That's just to get rid of any crap on there from the last lot. A little bit of olive oil. And we'll get the asparagus on there first. Don't try and chuck it all on at the same time, because you'll just start burning your fingers. And obviously you don't want to to char this too much, you just want to get a little bit of that barbecue flavour on the veg. And just keep rolling it. If you throw all the veg on there at once because you've put oil on there, whole barbecue will heat up, start flaming like crazy and you'll you'll burn all your veg then you'll burn your hands because you're trying to lift it all off and you'll probably burn your eyebrows off and everything else and then you'll be calling me worse names under the sun just lightly barbecued into the bowl and we get the broccoli on there Again, just nice and light. You see your, your coals are absolutely perfect in the bottom of there now, if you have a look, bring that camera in. That's exactly how you want your coals. It doesn't look like there's a lot in there, but that is just beautifully, beautifully hot. It's like, that's like, it's like optimum temperature now. This is like a temperature that you can control. You can control cook on there. It's not out of your hands. It's not, nothing's on fire. Put the lid down there a little bit. Get a bit of smoke on that broccoli. That's it. Beautiful. Awesome. In there, like so. Now, I'm not going to bother putting the green beans on there because they're so small. You'll lose them through the bars, and uh, yeah, it's just a waste of time. So they're just perfect the way they are. So it's just finishing this salad off now. So you've got your pre-prepared lettuce and pickles, and in here you've got your wild garlic, uh, like pickly dressing, which is ready to go. So if you just Throw your green beans in like that, don't need to chop them up because they're quite small. Take out your broccoli and just go through it in half. That's all you want. It's absolutely beautiful that, so tender into that salad. And the same with the asparagus. In half again. 
give it a little toss. Awesome green salad. And then just a few spoons. Of the dressing. Toss that together. And then just a little bit of salt. And that's it, that's ready to go. So we're gonna pop over here and we're just gonna finish this bad boy off. So this has been resting. It's beautifully rested. Just let a bit of that juice drain off there. And she's gonna go back on the heat. Put that lid down a little bit if you've got one. Like I said, if you haven't got a lid, you can just pop a little metal tin or something over the top just to get a bit of that smoke to stick to the steak. It smells amazing. Then all you're looking for here is just a re-crisping crisping out the outside of the steak. Get it nice and beautiful. The fat will crisp it up straight away. Beautiful that. That's what you want. Give that 20 more seconds on there and then we'll get it off and then we'll get this dish finished off so this is coming off beautiful here look at that unbelievable nice and crispy fat which is what you want and we'll take this over awesome so we, we're there we're going to finish this off now so you've got your beautiful green salad in there ready to go your wild garlic mayonnaise uh, the dressing from the salad leave it on there because you might want to dress the potatoes or put it over your steak the potatoes are perfectly cooked your steak, just lift it off here, bang it straight on there, and then you pop your sauce back on the stove, but just very gently heat it. You don't want to cook it too much because you, if you, the reason why we added them prawns right at the end when it was off the heat is because otherwise they'll go rubbery. You want them to be really tender. Just have it nice and warm, and you just pile that on top of that steak. Look at that. And that's it, she's done. So there you have it, beautiful tomahawk steak done on the barbecue uh, with an awesome surf, surf, well, surf and turf style dish with brown shrimps and garlic and shallots. And then on the side, you've got this awesome uh, seasonal green salad with barbecued vegetables, pickled shallots, wild garlic, wild garlic mayonnaise, and some uh, beautiful new season potatoes. What, what more do you not want than that? It's incredible. So we're just going to finish this bad boy off. So it's been sat resting somewhere, maybe on top of the oven or something. I've just popped it back in a 100 degree oven there, just for a few minutes, just to warm back up. Which is in here with the lid on. So we're just gonna take this lid off here. Oh yeah, look at that. Just beautiful, moist cake. So just get it, you can either just, I mean, I wouldn't even bother putting it in the bowls because it's just washing up. I'd just back a load of ice cream on top of there and share it out, but we're gonna put it in bowls just to make it look pretty. So just scoop it out. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, chef. Unbelievable. I'll tell you what, so moist. And obviously there's loads there left. And then we've got this non-churn ice cream, which is dead easy. Just get a spoon, get a big blob, bang. Look at that. There you go, enjoy. So there you have it, stick toffee pudding, absolute filth with uh, non-churn vanilla ice cream.
Favourite restaurant? Um, well, the best, it's hard to answer that one because obviously I haven't eaten in every restaurant in the world, but my favourite experience so far is Franzen restaurant in Stockholm. Absolutely blew me away. Uh, experience just it reset my whole world in cooking. Well, not cooking, hospitality, should I say. Because cooking, the food was, was, was amazing, you know, and, but the food didn't blow me away. It was the experience. It was the hospitality. It was the way they had you in their hand from the moment you pressed the doorbell on the front door. And it was just that whole thing. It just absolutely blew me away. And uh, yeah, that's it. If you haven't been, you've got to go. Death Row Meal, that's a hard one that is, but I've got to say a lamb Sunday dinner with mint sauce. Three dinner guests, um, my mum, because she never got to see uh, where, we, where what we've done here and I would love her to get to, I would love her to see this, uh, but unfortunately she's not here. Motley Crew, because imagine having dinner with Motley Crew. Absolute carnage, I mean, I think my mum would get on really well with them. <laughs> and then Jesus, just to calm it all down. <laughs> Favourite flavour crisp, hands down, is onion rings. You get the, the pound ones, the cheapest, nastiest onion rings you can buy. Unbelievable. I love them. If I wasn't a chef, I'd be in prison. <laughs> Simple as that. Have you ever had a brush with the wall? A few times. <laughs> <laughs> right, we won't go into that one. Yeah, <laughs> let's get over that. <laughs>